The Anatsuka Tiger GSM is one of the most underrated shoes you can wear this year. It comes in great colorways, it's affordable, and it's super versatile. It can be dressed up or it can be dressed down. And in this video, we are going to be looking at sleepers like this one and some all-time classics to come up with a definitive list of the top 10 best shoes to wear this summer. The Onitsuka Tiger GSM is a shoe that not enough people are talking about. And when you think of the year's most popular shoes, it has all of the same features. It's got leather paneling, it's got a gray suede toe box, and it even has an aged midsole. Plus, it has these little pops of earth tone colors that will go with the majority of your wardrobe. The best part is, is that you can grab these for damn near $100. And when it comes to styling these, you can wear them with a graphic tee and a trucker hat, all the way to more an elevated style like you see here with an Oxford shirt and some shorts. For sizing, I wear a size eight and a half here and they fit true to size. The Reebok Club C85 is the best bang for your buck sneaker on this list. In fact, it is the only sneaker on this list that's made from leather that is under a hundred dollars. And the crazy thing is that the leather is actually good quality. The leather is super soft and makes them great for all different foot types. In fact, these were actually designed earlier in the eighties to be a tennis shoe, but people gravitated to wear them because of their comfort and decided to use them for everyday wear. And if you're more of a fan of like the special sneakers, these have a ton of collabs like Jound, Palace, and Dine to name a few. All of the colorways that you'll see are pretty muted and relatively simple. And for that reason, I think that they're better suited for a more casual menswear aesthetic, which is why I wore them with an open collar shirt over a tank top and some shorts. These fit true to size, I'm wearing a size 8.5. And one quick tip when it comes to buying these is that sometimes sizes do sell out. But because the shoe is unisex, I recommend hopping over to the women's section and to go up a size and a half. For example, I wear an eight and a half and for women's, I wear a size 10. Next up is the Asics Gel Kayano 14. These are hands down the most comfortable shoes on this list. Better yet, these are the most comfortable shoes in my entire sneaker collection. So if comfort is your number one priority, trust me, you need to grab them. They also are their most stylistic, meaning that uh, because of that increase in that Y2K sort of aesthetic, shoes like early 2000s runners like the Gel Kayano 14 have become increasingly, increasingly more popular. Now, if you don't love the metallic hits on these, they actually do have a bunch of more neutral tone colors that utilize suede that go better with jeans and that kind of thing. However, the way that I styled them is with some sweats. I think that is like the best uh, outfit to go with these is more of an athleisure type of style here. So that's why I went with a zip up hoodie and a pair of sweatpants. And like the other sneakers mentioned, they have a bunch of specialty product as well. They have collabs with Awake NY, they have those Jound collabs, of course. Either way, I, this is a GR that I just picked up from StockX for like, I don't know, under 200 bucks. Regardless, sizing, they fit true to size. I wear a size eight and a half in these and they fit very comfortable. Next up is New Balance and the 1906R. New Balance has easily been my most worn sneaker brand this year. I just love what they're putting out. And in my opinion, the 1906R is easily one of their best shoes that they've put out this year. There's something about the mix of suede and mesh paneling on this shoe that is just really, really good. We've seen it with the uh, 2002R protection pack versions, and these ones are an absolute hit as well. So what I recommend doing is picking up any colorways that you can of these. I have the gray, I have the white, but definitely the white has been the most worn given the season. Comfort on these is excellent. One quick thing I want to flag is the sizing. These do fit a bit wide for me. I have a pretty narrow foot uh, and I normally go an 8.5 in all of my New Balance sneakers and I never have an issue. For these ones actually, I think I could have gone with an 8. 8.5 is perfectly fine. Regardless, when it comes to styling these though, super simple. Just grab a pair of light wash jeans. I put on a Stussy uh, uh, vest here and a white tee as well as a vintage hat. So trust me, any colorways of the 1906R, you really do need to pick up. This next shoe is perfect for the consumer who is craving something different. It is the Stephanie Workers Club Pearl S Strike. This is a London based brand inspired by Worker Sports Club of the 1930s and the footwear actually is reminiscent of the design of athletic shoes from the time, which is kind of why they have that like Converse look and feel here. The best part is, is that they're super easy to style and the build quality is excellent. They have this really nice thick midsole and uh, which give you a bit of an extra inch of height, which is perfect. Your boy's 5'7", and I can use all the help that I can get. Because of that sort of UK aesthetic, I wanted to uh, style them accordingly, which is why I went with the Liverpool shirt here. I am a Liverpool supporter, um, and I threw on this, uh, this New York Cubans hat, as well as some straight fit salvage denim. The vibes are immaculate on this one. I'm actually a huge fan of this outfit. Anyways, I highly recommend this shoe. And in terms of sizing, I went with a size 41, which is a size eight. Uh, so I do recommend half sizing down. 
Next up is one of the most polarizing shoes on this list. It is the Salehi Bembury Crocs. I think because of the pandemic, soft slip on shoes like you see here have become increasingly more popular. And as a result, it seems like every single brand is putting out their own version of them. But in my opinion, the best has to be Salehi Bembury Crocs. One thing I would recommend is actually maybe stepping out of the comfort zone and getting some of the colored ones. Uh, I obviously gravitated towards white because of the fact that it goes with everything. And this is a white shoe uh, video. However, the ones with color just pop really, really nice. Now in terms of styling, I sort of wanted to mimic one of his type of outfits. So I went with a Stussy T uh, that's in this nice lilac color, a side bag, uh, a beanie, as well as some Nike HCG pants. Absolutely love this one. Now sizing is tricky because they don't sell half sizes. So I went down a size to an eight and that's something I recommend you guys do. You definitely have to go down a size. There's still a little bit roomy uh, for, for me, um, but ultimately go down a size or even two sizes depending on the type of foot that you have. This is the most classic shoe on this entire list. In many ways, it is the shoe that started it all. Of course, I'm talking about the Converse Chuck Taylor, but specifically the Converse Chuck 70. In my opinion, I've gotten so accustomed to that beige midsole that seeing a pair of Chucks with that white midsole just kind of irks me a bit. Personal preference, regardless, grab any color. They're perfect for the summer, whether it's the low tops or the high tops. I absolutely love wearing these. And I love, I've always loved how Converse look with a more workwear style. So that's why I threw them on with some Dickies 874 pants. I threw on a bowling shirt. This kind of also looks like a mechanic shirt as well. I threw on a, a white long sleeve underneath. And honestly, it's just a total, total vibe. The best part about Converse is they have so many collaborations. One of my favorites of the past year has to be the Stussy collab. These shoes sat for a long time. They were very easy to get and they sort of have that classic Stussy blueprint with that hemp color. Um, regardless, absolutely love these. As always, when it comes to Chuck Taylor sizing, you definitely got to go down one full size. I go an eight on these and even then they're still a bit roomy. Okay, so let me know in the comments, what is a more iconic shoe, the Converse Chuck 70 or the Nike Air Force One? That's a good debate right there. Regardless, the Nike Air Force One should be in everybody's sneaker collection. In many ways, it is kind of the perfect summer shoe, especially in that triple white color. It is by love by all, old, young, male, female, anything in between, everybody should have a pair in their collection. And my favorite aspect of the shoe recently is that there's so many good versions of it, whether it's the premium quality Drake certified lover boy version, or it's the ones that you can find in the mall with just a splash of color on them. Either way, you can't go wrong with any pair. And when it comes to styling them in 2023, for me, what I like to do is add as much color to my outfit as possible because the shoes go with everything. So that's why you're seeing these baby blue shorts here with the graphic tee and a vintage Jays cap. And as always for sizing, same deal as the Converse. I go a full size down. That is a very important detail when it comes to Air Force One styling and it should be common knowledge. So uh, don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, these next shoes are by far the most trendiest shoe of the entire year. And I'm gonna kind of group three of them together. It is the Adidas Samba, the Superstar, and the Gazelle. Because they're all from Adidas and kind of have a similar vibe, I'm gonna be chatting about all of them. They're all great to style in 2023. And in my opinion, I feel like they're kind of like overheated. They've become almost like the meme shoe now, almost like the uh, Panda Dunks. But in at the end of the day, it's a shoe that everybody is absolutely wearing. And for good reason, because I remember when I got my first pair, they instantly became my most worn shoes of the entire year because they do go with everything. For me, I always gravitated towards them because I do play soccer. I've played soccer my entire life. It is a football shoe at the end of the day. Um, so keep that in mind because it does have a little bit more of a narrow shape. And as time has gone on, there's a number of great collaborations to choose from, whether it's Sporty and Rich, Kith, and just so many others. There's a bunch of new ones coming out as well. So ultimately, you can't mention 2023 great shoes without mentioning the Adidas Samba. Um, and in terms of sizing, these fit true to size. I'm wearing an eight and a half and they fit comfortably. Solomon is definitely another brand you need to grab from in 2023. The XT6 in particular is, in my opinion, one of their best. I don't have the all white pair. I do have the colored pairs and I will absolutely love them. The one thing that I love particularly with the white pair is that a ton of people have been doing a lot of customizations with them. I think because it has a predominantly mesh upper, people when they do dip dyes and coffee dyes, it really turns out and I think looks great. 
Solomon is also a shoe that is very comfortable, especially the XT6. And because of that rugged outsole, it does sort of support that sort of adventurous type of lifestyle. So whether you're wearing them casually like I do, or you actually are going hiking with them, they're perfect for both. Solomon is also a brand that does a lot in terms of reducing their carbon footprint. So if you love to make environmentally friendly, conscious decisions in terms of your footwear, then you definitely need to grab a pair. For sizing, I'm wearing a size eight and a half and they fit perfect. To learn about accessories that will instantly upgrade your style, check this video out right here. There's a bunch of hat recommendations, sunglasses, side bags, you name it. Or if you wanna learn about some spring summer essentials, these are clothes that will never go out of style check this video out right here. So why don't we click on one of those and I'll meet you guys there.